today we're going to be comparing the gaming performance on a MacBook Pro 13 inch M1 from 2020 against a MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2019, the Intel version. For reference, you can see the specs of these machines on screen right now. Our first game is Black Ops 3, which supports the Metal API. I will note here that every single game in this video is running at 1080p. This game officially requires an AMD graphics card, which both of these machines don't have. However, as you can see, the game is somewhat playable on the M1 MacBook Pro, which you can see on the left side of the screen. Whereas for the 2019 MacBook Pro, it is almost unplayable. Yes, there are occasions when it does get a steady 40 FPS, but I'm running the game at the lowest quality preset on this machine. Whereas on the M1 MacBook, we are running it at max settings and it is usually getting around 40 FPS. However, sometimes it randomly drops to 20 frames, which is weird. I don't know why that is. If this game is optimized for the Apple M1, I can imagine it would be able to achieve a more steady frame rate. I went into settings on the M1 and lowered some of the settings to around medium. This resulted in the frame rate more steadily targeting 60 frames. However, as you will see, the frame rate would sometimes drop into the low 30s, which yeah, is still very unusual. As for the 2019 MacBook Pro, testing the game on high, which was ridiculous, it is completely unplayable at about nine frames. Yet I was still able to get some kills, but it was very, very difficult. Black Ops 3 is the only Call of Duty game available on Mac nowadays. All the other ones have been removed for support due to being 32-bit. So if you're wondering if you can play it on your M1 Mac, the answer is yes and no. I would wait until it is patched for Rosetta 2 or for official M1 support. Will that come? I have no answer for you. But it's still a pretty good game even though it's four years old. Also, something really weird is going on with controller support on Apple M1. It is not working for me on the 13-inch MacBook Pro M1, whereas on the Intel it is. This is a reoccurring theme in some games, so I really don't know what's happening there, but I just thought I'd point that out. Up next, we have the Apple Arcade game Samurai Jack, which also supports the Metal framework. However, again, it's running under Rosetta 2. On the left, you can see that the game is targeting a steady 60 FPS, while the Intel Mac on the right is not playable really, well below 10 frames. I'm running the game at the highest quality preset on the M1 Mac as well, whereas on the 2019 model, I have to run the game at the lowest quality preset in order for the game to get a somewhat higher frame rate. This is not the most advanced game out there. It is probably one of the most advanced games on Apple Arcade, mind you, but overall, it's not that crazy. Alrighty, so this is pretty cool. If you were watching WWDC, one of the tech sessions, you would have seen this game showcased on an Apple Silicon Mac. Well, I was able to get this game to run under Unity and I was able to export the project and I've got it officially supported for Apple M1 and it runs pretty well at about 60 frames. Whereas on the 2019 MacBook Pro, it is unplayable and once you get to this point, it completely freezes and it doesn't work. This game is just a tech demo, so it is showcasing lots of advanced graphical techniques that are possible on these M1 Macs or on consoles or high-end PCs. So it's pretty incredible that it is running here so well uh, when you <laughs> compare it to the 2019 MacBook Pro, which is completely frozen right now. And it also has Metal API support on both Intel and Apple M1. World of Warcraft, as many of you may know by now if you saw my previous episode, it has official M1 support, so it runs pretty well. At the highest quality preset, it runs at about 30 to 40 FPS, 
which is not bad. I would have liked it to achieve a higher frame rate, but I don't know what's going on. Some people have claimed that they can get 60 FPS, but for me, it's just not getting there. So I have to lower the quality preset to around high, and then it can achieve something higher than 40, or if I go even lower to about medium, it can get 60. Whereas the Intel Mac, it can only get 60 FPS at the lowest quality preset. But all in all, the game is still very playable on both of these machines. Honestly, I have no idea how to play this game, so I'm really sorry if the footage is <laughs> really basic, but uh, it's just not my sort of game, but I know many of you people love this one, so I knew I had to show it, especially because it has M1 support. So in my last video, lots of you requested me to take a look at Troy. This game is Metal 2 supported and it's running under Rosetta. And as you can see, it is pretty much unplayable on the 2019 MacBook Pro, on average three frames per second. Whereas on the left-hand side, the MacBook Pro is running it at the highest quality preset and getting around 30 FPS on average. However, if I run the game at medium quality, it's able to get 50 FPS on average, which is fantastic. That's really good to see because if I run the game on the lowest quality preset on the Intel MacBook Pro, it performs somewhat better, but at 24 FPS on average. Borderlands 3. As you would have seen from my previous video, this game is incredibly demanding on Mac, even for high-end Intel Macs with dedicated graphics cards. This M1 Mac is able to play the game at the highest quality preset and get around 22 FPS on average. However, for this demo, I'm running the game at a medium quality preset and the game gets about 30 to 40 FPS on average. The 2019 MacBook Pro is very peculiar because when you first launch the game, it is getting an extremely low frame rate and it is so difficult to shoot people because the camera is just going everywhere because the frame rate is so low. However, after a few minutes, the frame rate does stable out at a very <laughs> low 20 FPS. Uh, but yeah, this machine is not supported for this game at all because Borderlands 3 requires at least an eight gigabytes graphics card. However, the M1 Mac seems to be able to run it reasonably well. The game supports the Metal Framework. However, it's using Rosetta 2. Again, most of these games are using Rosetta 2. By the way, I never noticed it much until now, but this game is incredibly gory. I never noticed that, you know, when you shoot people, they completely explode and their body parts come apart. It's, it, I was not expecting it. It's uh, a bit confronting, but it's, it's pretty cool. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is an interesting one because this game is actually officially supported on 13 inch MacBook Pros all the way back to 2016. However, to run the game well, you have to play it at 720p, lowest quality preset, uh, for example here, and you will get about 20 to 30 FPS on average. So uh, playable, I don't know. Uh, on the M1 MacBook Pro, it runs significantly better here we are running the game at the low quality preset and it is getting 38 FPS on average. When at high, it gets about 24 FPS on average. This game is using the Metal 2 graphics API, so it is pretty well optimized for both Intel and Apple M1 if you are running it on a more powerful Intel machine, that is. Dota 2, oh man, it, it doesn't like me this game because I've seen people playing this one well above 60 frames on their M1 Max and I don't know why I can't do it. I've got the FPS cap well above 60 and it just, it doesn't want to play above 60. But the game on the highest quality preset is getting about 30 to 35 FPS on the M1 MacBook Pro and 20 to 30 FPS on the 2019 MacBook Pro. So there is still quite a bit of a boost in performance. That said, this game is pretty playable on integrated Macs. So if you lower the graphics preset to about medium or even low, it can achieve 60 FPS pretty easily on the Intel Mac. So what do you think of the results? Impressed, disappointed? 
let me know in the comments. This video was just a very quick demonstration of what you can expect between the previous generation and the new generation of MacBook Pro, which as you may see is a pretty substantial difference. If you enjoyed this episode, stay tuned as I have many more Apple M1 videos coming up over the next few days covering different topics, so keep a lookout. Leave a like to show your support and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. Anyway, my name is Stewie and thanks for watching.